Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the convolution property of the Z transform. Convolution property of Z transforms. That is, if, if we have two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n with the corresponding Z transforms, then we can determine the convolution of these two sequences by using the Z transforms. So, the property uh, related to convolution of two sequences is it is given two signals as if x1 has Z transform x1 of Z and x2 of n that is the signal x2 of n has Z transform x2 of Z then their convolution defined as x of n which is convolution of x1 of n with x2 of n as a z transform x of z which can be defined as the product of the two individual z transforms that is x1 of z and x2 of z. So, that is the z transform of a convolution sequence. Basically, the property says that uh, convolution in time domain is equivalent to multiplication in z domain that is convolution in time domain that is in time is equivalent to multiplication that is we just multiply the z transforms in z domain. The ROC of the convolution sequence the ROC of of x of z the, uh, the z transform of the convolution is given by at least intersection of the this ROC will include at least the intersection of ROCs of x1 of z and x2 of z. That is the ROC of the z transform x of z will be at least an intersection of the ROCs of x1 of z and x2 of z respectively. Now, let us look at the proof for this property. That is first we will apply the z transform definition to the convolution sequence. That is, that is the z transform x of z will be by definition summation n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of n z power minus n. Now, based on the definition of convolution x of n can be written as the convolution of x1 of n with x2 of n and by definition this is basically an infinite sum that is summation from by def so by definition this convolution is defined as summation k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of k multiplied by x2 of n minus k. So, this is the definition of convolution. Now, we substitute this definition or this expression in the definition of the z transform of x of n that is x of z x of z can be written as summation n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity and now x of n is replaced by this summation that is we have summation k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of k multiplied by x2 of n minus k multiplied by z power minus n. Now, the next step is to replace n minus k with m and n with m plus k. Therefore, the summation becomes n is replaced by m. So, m also has same limit. So, m is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity and the second sum is k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of k x2 of m that is n minus k is replaced by m and z power minus of n is replaced by m plus k. Now, by grouping all the terms that have k and all the terms that have m separately that is summation k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of k z power minus k and the second one is summation m is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x2 of m z power minus m. So, by definitions these two are basically z transforms of x1 of k and x2 of k respectively. Therefore, x of z will be equal to x1 of z multiplied by x2 of z. So, therefore, convolution in time domain is in fact multiplication z domain. So, to summarize we have defined the convolution property for z transforms that is 
if there are two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n with corresponding z transforms x1 of z and x2 of z then the z transform of the convolution of this x1 of n and x2 of n that is uh, x of n defined as convolution of x1 of n with x2 of n has a z transform x of z which is basically the product of corresponding z transforms that is x1 of z and x2 of z so therefore convolution time domain is equivalent to multiplication z domain the proof is uh, very simple and it follows from the definition of the z transform of the convolution sequence so we use the definition of convolution and replace x of n with its convolution definition and then we have two summations we use the change of variables and basically group the terms that have only k terms and also m terms separately and then we arrive at the definitions of the z transforms and finally x of z will be the product of x1 of z and x2 of z so that proves the convolution property Thanks for watching.